the author of The Extra Man and Wake Up, Sir, and the fully frontal creator of Bored to Death, Jonathan Ames. All the shadows in the city used to love you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> this, this mic was a bit limp at the moment, um, <laughs> drooping. And most of the writers understand, especially this fellow right up front. I, you know, when you're flailing immediately, it's good to pick on the first sort of effeminate male in the front. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, you're, I know you're secretly masculine as that woman who's leaning towards you with her arms crossed though, showing some kind of a psychological defensiveness. Anyway, um, as, a, as, a, as a very affected kind of sort of Spanish Inquisition Jew, I'm, I'm completely intoxicated at the moment because if you put Prosecco in front of certain people, it's like cocaine, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's more fun than champagne because it's Prosecco, though it's basically the same thing. But because I'm intoxicated in a kind of a Dean Martin way, I want to express collectively for all of us that I don't fully understand what's happening in the alternative universe of Los Angeles at the moment. Like, I mean, <laughs> are they saying accepting in New York? I mean, but thankfully we have one celebrity, Mandy Patinkin, to accept all awards. I mean, so <laughs> thank you, Mandy. And, and to keep, I, I, I have to say, just in a Jewish way, since most people here are writers and about 75% of the people here, like Vienna pre-Hitler, are Jewish, um, I, I like your tallest that you're wearing. Um, but, so I was told that as a consolation for my show, which, is called, which was called, I have to use the past tense, uh, Bored to Death, that I would be presenting an award at the Writers Guild. Okay, well, you could clap, you know, if you like. I mean, just give me a pause, like a semicolon. And, um, but not to quibble, but, I mean, wouldn't receiving an award be a better consolation? <laughs> I mean, okay, well, not a grand laughter on that one, which is evident why maybe the show was canceled. But, anyway, I'm having a good time. There's a lot of Prosecco. There's attractive ladies up front whom I could make all sorts of subconscious eye contact with. Okay, but let me get to what I'm supposed to do, and, um, okay, so, wait a second. <laughs> um, the nominees for television, long form, original, are a cinema verite. Now, look, I mentioned I was uh, affected, but they did put in a phonetic spelling, a verite. I mean, I don't think that's how the French would say it, right? Verite? <laughs> That's more like how you say it in Indiana after you've drank a six-pack. Uh, cinema very day. I don't know. I don't mean to mock Indiana, but it was easy because I taught there once and I have a problem with the Blo uh, Bloomington or wherever the hell I was <laughs> positioned for a year when I was writing prose. But all you guys are writing scripts. It's much more festive. That's what I was going to say. Winning a award is a more festive consolation for having a show being canceled. But... All awards have to go to Modern Family because it has the word family. My show had the word death, which is, you know, the other fact of life. But, yeah, but family is the before, and so they should win the awards. Okay, so let me start over again. Okay. The nominees for television long-form original are Cinema Verite, a fictionalized account of the making and unmaking of an American family and perhaps the birth of reality TV, written by David Seltzer, HBO. I mean, <laughs> I should mention my show was canceled by HBO. I mean, I think I should, <laughs> this was supposed to be a consolation prize. Um, the other nominee is Five, an anthology of five short films exploring the human experience of being diagnosed and dealing with breast cancer. I'm not gonna make a joke about that. I've, that, that really fell flat. But, you know, look, we're writers, things fall flat. There's no winning after that. Those five short films are am I, Pearl, written by Deirdre O'Connor. I mean, the phonetic smellings are really throwing me off. Uh, Charlotte, written by Stephen Godshow. Cheyenne, written by Howard Morris. Lil, 
written by Jill Gordon, and Mia, written by Wendy West. Uh, West, I'm sorry, I am drunk. I acknowledge that at the top. <laughs> Wendy, if you're here, I, you're probably in Los Angeles having a better time. <laughs> Mia, written by Wendy West. West, I almost cursed, but this isn't being broadcast. Lifetime. Oh God, I got to open an envelope. I, they said this would be flat. And the award goes to... <laughs> <laughs> Long form original. I hope I have it in the right order. I'm so. Oh, shite. <laughs> That's a, another affected way for a Jew to say shit in German. Shite. Uh, David Sel Seltzer for Cinema Verite. <laughs> Accepting for Mr. Seltzer and the directors of Cinema are the si directors Sherry Springer Berman and Robert Pulcini, who directed the adaptation of my novel, The Extra Man. This is, I didn't know this beforehand. I didn't open the envelope. I didn't steam it or anything. I don't know either. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, David Seltzer. And thank you to David Seltzer for the uh, wonderful work he did on this movie. Uh, it was really a bear to write, and he really worked his ass off for us. And um, he's an amazing guy. Uh, he actually is an inspiration to a lot of us here tonight. He wrote the original Omen, and he's still going strong. So congratulations, David. David would like us to thank HBO and uh, the Loud family, who this movie was based on, um, who in 1973, 71, allowed cameras to film the uh, deepest, darkest secrets of their lives. And they're still being filmed in a way. And also, I think we should give this to Jonathan, um, because he's never, <laughs> it's, it's perfect for you. Uh, anyway, and he would like to thank the producers as well. Thank you. Th that is a very female-centric award. I mean, has it always been shaped like that, or just this year? All right. But um, I didn't know David Seltzer wrote The Omen. I love that movie. I love the moment when the woman... I have a lot of suicidal ideation. So when she is like, this is for you, Damien, I mean, that really, you know, made an imprint on my mind. I didn't, you know, and I, I had a scene in Bored to Death. I, I mean, it's very self-referential and narcissistic bring it up, but when John Hodgman, like, says to Oliver Platt, you guys know those names, and you wouldn't have seen the show. Oh, God, I've lost all the cards. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> this is, is this a bad profession? Look, I've already been canceled. I, I'm going back to novels anyway. Um, what the, uh, I've lost my train of thought. But anyway, I have John Hodgman say to Oliver Platt in the show, I did this for you, Richard, because I, the very first time I got stoned, which I'm going to, because now I'm drunk, now I can move to my drug of choice, which is marijuana, because I was like, I was like, I can't go on stage stoned, but I can go on drunk. But this took so long that I got really drunk. Um, so I had in Bored to Death, John Hodgman say, this is for you, Richard, when he stood up, you know, and it was a totally, uh, a homosexual subplot. Anyway, uh, but it was, and I didn't know David Seltzer wrote The Omen. Well, anyway, let me just move on and get off the freaking stage here before I destroy my career any further. <laughs> I mean, there should be lighting up here that makes this easy. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm youthful, some of my organs. All right, um, but my eyes are good. All right, um, next, television long form adapted. You got that? Uh, the nominee, you do see it up there. The, the nominees are Mildred Pierce. The story of one woman's struggle to balance life and the books during the Great Depression. Teleplay by Todd Haynes and John Raymond, based on the novel by James H. Kane. HBO, I mean, what's going on here? I mean, this is really, <laughs> no, HBO, they're wonderful, except for canceling. But Mildred Pierce is a nominee, okay. <laughs> the next one is, <laughs> I, I, I need glasses for like a disturbed vision. Um, too Big to Fail, the story of several men's struggle to make any sense, I like that, of the books, 
during the subprime mortgage meltdown, it's a total uh, hypochondriacal economic situation. I'd have put Mildred on the case. Too Big to Fail, written by Peter Gould, based on the book written by Andrew Ross Sorkin. Does he work for Modern Family? HBO, HBO. I mean, is there another network? Oh, okay, now I have to open another <laughs> envelope. And the award goes to, oh my God, this is like my desk at home. I can't find the envelope. I think I opened it prematurely and saw it. I, I, Paul, you're a friend. I see you up front. It's one sympathetic face up front there. <laughs> Thank you. Just say that. Can you say that loudly? You're doing great, Jonathan. Merci beaucoup. Merci bien. I told you I was affected. That's French for something. I'm very mechanically uninclined. Even envelopes are difficult. She's cute. Um, no, I don't mean to be sexist, but this is a writer's thing, and I was, you know. Um, Peter Gould, for Too Big to Fail, Peter's accepting in the alternative universe of Los Angeles, and, we're, we, and we congratulate him. Is that happening in real time? So I guess that's it. Peter Gould, Too Big to Fail. Thank you very much for having me. Uh,